So the last few videos have given us some practice in actually computing the trigonometric Fourier series and the compact trigonometric Fourier series. Let's go ahead and spend some time just investigating some general properties of the Fourier series, you know, periodicity, convergence properties, things like that. So this and the next video talk just more generally about general behavior of the Fourier series. So first of all, if it hasn't been obvious, the trigonometric Fourier series is always a t naught periodic function. So every time we end up with a trigonometric Fourier series, that representation is a periodic signal. And it's periodic with whatever the period was or the time interval that we used to do the expansion. So if we chose a window of width t naught, the signal that we come up with in terms of the representation is a t naught periodic function. So this right here is the compact trigonometric Fourier series representation. For convenience, I'll just call it theta, theta of t, I'm sorry, phi of t. And we can show very easily that phi of t is t naught periodic. So we can do it just by a very direct computation. So let's evaluate what phi at time t plus t naught is. So that means take every t on this equation and replace it with t plus t naught. So the t that was there originally has been replaced with t plus t naught. I can go ahead and distribute this right here. So that becomes n omega t, n omega t naught. Remember how omega and t naught are related. Omega naught is always 2 pi over t naught. So if I replace omega naught with 2 pi over t naught, the t naught here and the t naught there cancel and I just have 2 pi. So I end up with 2n pi right here. Cosine of an argument, adding 2 pi doesn't do anything. Adding n times 2 pi doesn't do anything, right? So this term right here, I can remove without changing anything. So that's what I've done in this final line of math. This final line of math, though, is the exact equation phi of t. So we've actually ended up back at phi of t. So a direct computation shows that phi of t plus t naught is equal to phi of t. So phi of t, this representation, is indeed a periodic function. What does that mean for us? That means if we are trying to represent a signal that is periodic with period t naught, then the representation of that signal will be good for all time because the Fourier series representation is periodic with period t naught, the signal is periodic with period t naught, they match then for all time. However, if I'm working with a non-periodic signal, some f of t, and I choose this time interval of width t naught, f of t and its Fourier series are going to be equal on that time interval, but outside the time interval t naught, my Fourier series is going to repeat, and my signal f of t is just going to do whatever it was doing. So outside of the time interval t naught, we won't match a non-periodic signal. That's really why, for the most part, we, we tend to say we use the Fourier series to represent periodic signals only because we tend to want a representation that is good for all time, not just some time interval. It's okay to do it just for some time interval, but be aware, if you work with a signal f of t and represent it on a time window from, say, 0 to t naught, that representation is only good on 0 to t naught. Times outside that, the Fourier series and f of t aren't going to match up. It's only when f of t is periodic, then they match up for all time. The next concept we want to talk about is what we call the Fourier spectrum. What have we been doing? We've been trying to write signals f of t as a sum of sinusoids of different frequencies, dc, the fundamental frequency, all the harmonics on the fundamental frequency. And those frequencies have amplitudes, c0, c1, c2, etc. And they also have phases, 0, theta1, theta2, etc. So when we're all done representing a signal with its Fourier series representation, we have this set of amplitude c and this set of phases, theta. One way to represent this information graphically is through what's called plotting the spectrum of the signal. When we plot the amplitudes, these are the CNs versus omega, that is what we call the amplitude spectrum of f of t. So when you plot this, you actually make a plot versus omega. The values of CNs are located at 0, omega naught, 2 omega naught, 3 omega naught, etc. And you literally just plot a stem at each of those locations with the height equal to cn and located at 
zero, or some multiple of the fundamental. So this plot's you know, very simple. It's basically zero everywhere, except you have lines at these frequencies, and those lines have a height equal to the CN. That's what we call the amplitude spectrum. That amplitude spectrum basically tells us how much of each frequency is present. How much is determined by the amplitude CN. You can do a very similar thing with the theta ends. If you plot these theta ends as a function of omega, that is what we call the phase spectrum of F of t. Again, this plot looks pretty sparse. It's zero everywhere, except at zero you have zero. At omega naught you have theta one. At two omega naught you have theta two, etc. So it just consists of these lines plotted as stems as a function of omega. It's what we call the phase spectrum of F of t. Together, we call these combined plots, you know, both of them as a combination, we call them the frequency spectra. If we have the frequency spectra, so if I give you either these lists of numbers, or if I represent those lists of numbers graphically with the amplitude spectrum and the phase spectrum, and I give them to you, you can look at those plots and you can go construct f of t, because you know how to take those numbers and plug them into the equation. Because of that, that's why we say that this is the Fourier series frequency domain representation of f of t, because it's a perfectly equivalent way to plot and represent the signal. You're just doing it in the frequency domain. You're telling me what frequencies are present, what their amplitudes are, what their phases are. From that information, I can go construct f of t in the time domain if I want.